Hey guys, I'm May here. So I got some trips coming up and you know I'm gonna be pulling a fifth wheel and I've been you know looking into dedicated GPS's whether it's worth it or not. You know, am I gonna be okay with uh, just Google Maps, Waze, uh, you know, whatever whatever map system you guys use. Uh, you know, I already have something in my truck, you know, through my phone as well as the dedicated uh, navigation that's built into the truck. Um, but nothing really you know, will help encompass the, the length of the trailer for where you're going um, and help route, you know, whether it's uh, low bridges, or overpasses, um, you know, tighter curves where you might not be able to make it around as, as easy. Um, you know, plenty of people do just fine. There's always the paper map version. Um, but, uh, you know, I kind of wanted something a little more dedicated for that. So, looked into options uh, fairly recently. Garmin release their uh, RV uh, 890 I believe yeah RV 890 and um, so I ordered up and uh, just got it uh, a couple days ago and so I uh, figured I'd show you guys um, what it looks like do a little unboxing um, I'll plan on doing a, a custom install as well so it's hardwired into the truck um, so I'm assuming it probably just comes with a, a USB uh, power cable or something like that. So, uh, yeah, let's check it out. And uh, <clears throat> so I got the box here. Here's the the Garmin RV 890. And yeah, you know, just kind of some basics. You know, it's got an eight-inch screen, which is nice. So it's kind of one of the, their larger screens. Uh, if you're going to be, um, you know, using it on the road, then uh, you know, kind of a little bit better than uh, some of their smaller ones, you know, four or five, six inch versions. So, um, yeah, let's open it up, check it out, see what's inside, and uh, see what we're working with here. Okay, RV890, let's see what we got inside. Okay, looks like we got the unit itself. box got some accessories okay so this guy looks like we have a uh, uh, power cable for a cigarette lighter so that's definitely not going to get used um, I think is what we'll do is we'll we'll end up hardwiring this to uh, the truck power uh, so it's on accessory power, so anytime the truck is on, then uh, this will power up. And uh, so we'll do some kind of uh, adapter or wiring, so um, we will follow up with that and uh, show you how we do the, the custom install for that, for this guy. Looks like we have a base plate of some kind, maybe to do like a surface mount or something, I guess. Okay, got a USB cable, just a standard micro USB cable, got a ball mount, got some screws, nothing fancy there, just screws for probably mounting that base plate that we saw earlier. And this looks like the main mount, yeah, so this is a suction cut for the windshield. Looks pretty nice. I think this is supposed to be magnetic uh, to hold the hold the screen. Got a suction cup here. Um, so we'll do. I think that's how we're gonna do the custom installs. This will get mounted to the screen. We'll have to get the wiring up to to the windshield area somewhere. That way, we don't have you know cords hanging hanging down. Looks nice though. Solid. Yeah, really solid. Looks good. I'm excited. Here's the screen again. Power button. SD card slot. 
nothing on that side. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a uh, some positive and minus so volume, I guess here. All right, so turn this on and see what we got. Let's check it out. All right, so it's just got a protective cover on the screen. Let's take that off because we won't need that. that the box. Okay, so there's a power button on the side here. Hold that in. Garmin, of course. Wait for that to turn on. I like that screen. That looks really good. Okay, so English. Start. Yes, accept. Do you consent? Sure, let's agree to that for now. Uh, oh, Wi-Fi. Let me connect to that Wi-Fi really quick. Connect. There we go. Obtaining IP address. Okay. Click the Garmin Drive mobile app to access additional features for your RV890. Skip or connect now. Uh, let's connect now. Sure. Let's go through the whole process, right? So I got my phone here. Uh, I actually already have the Garmin Drive app installed. Connect now. And then on my phone, let's see if I can show you guys this. Okay, so I'll select device. It's trying to pair, so find Garmin device. Uh, so BTRV890, that looks like it. 739611, that matches. Pair. Oh, gotta hit pair on the RV890 as well. Uh, pair request, yes, pair. Uh, allow. Continue. Uh, I want somebody to sign into my Garmin account. So let me sign into that really quick. Location permissions. Yeah, we'll turn that on. Uh, allow while using app. Okay, so that should be connected on the Garmin Drive app now. I don't know if we need that anymore. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is now paired with the uh, with the phone. So let's say done. Uh, warning. Blah blah blah. Agree. Okay, so here's where we're getting into the good stuff. Now we're getting in the meat of this. So select your current vehicle. So you got motorhome, car. Vehicle with trailer, motorhome with trailer. So I have a vehicle with trailer. You would select your option, obviously. Uh, I have a fifth wheel. Uh, max height. So we got uh, 13, 5. 13 feet, 5 inches. Next. Max width. Let's go with 8 feet for now. And then trailer width. Let's just say 8 feet for now again. Uh, total length is uh so 42.9 next trailer length is not what we just did previous oh total length uh so total length is going to be the length of your vehicle plus the trailer so total length is going to be the 42.9 plus 42.9 is the trailer and then plus uh 20 feet 10 inches for the truck so then we got uh 62 what 63 and 7 inches 63 7 and then trailer length was the 42 9 next total weight you know the trailer is probably 15,000 or so uh, the trucks like 8100 uh, so for now let's just say uh, so we're gonna have some gear and whatnot, right? So let's say, uh, let's just put 24 for now. 24,000, we can adjust that later. Trailer weight, um, I don't know, 15,500 just for now. Okay, so it gives you all your dimensions. That's pretty cool that you plugged in. So we'll adjust this later after I confirm, of course. Uh, fifth wheel. I'll select. Welcome, wallpaper, settings, widgets, etc. Got it. Okay, so that's the base screen. So that's the that's the setup of everything. I'll get it installed in the truck and we'll do some tests on, um, you know, here's the map. Let's look at some of the screens really quick. Safe to travel, 
Oh, oh, not safe travel. Save travel history. Sure. Looks pretty good. I'm assuming it moves around. Yeah. I'm not sure how to use this thing yet, so I'll have to figure that out. I've never used the Garmin GPS before, so a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, now I'm back at the main screen, so. Um, up, down. I'll get it installed and uh, we'll take a look at some of the menus, let you guys know what I think. Hey guys, okay, so I'm in the truck. Uh, I got the 890 here. And we're gonna kind of look at how we want to do the custom install. Um, we got some options here. So we do have, so here's the box. Got everything in here. Uh, let's see what we got. <clears throat> so we know we want to use the uh, the windshield mount, uh, the magnetic mount here, or uh, suction cup to the windshield, magnetic mount to the GPS. Um, we will. We'll get it mounted up on the, uh, you know, somewhere around here. Um, something like that. Um, but I don't want, so here's my cable that I would need to do something with. Um, cause I don't want the cable kind of just hanging down, uh, in front of everything, you know, the whole time. So, uh, you know, here's my cigarette lighter plug. Um, you know, just kind of stay in there the whole time uh, in a way. Um, so we're gonna hardwire that. Um, we'll probably have to go up through. So we're gonna have to take this down, I think. And, uh, you know, we'll feed the wire from up here across the headliner and uh, down to um when you get back to the battery so luckily in the back seat i already have a uh <clears throat> a fuse box i installed previously from when i was doing the air compressor install so um, i think we'll just run the wire back to that and um uh, that'll give us our power uh for the device and that's already tied into accessory power so that way we don't have any parasitic drains on the battery and uh so yeah let me show you uh, what I did previously that I'm thinking of uh, tying into. Okay, so there's the rear view mirror. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna go up above the headliner, go down the A-pillar. Uh, we'll run along down the side and we'll come down the, uh, come up under here. And here's where I have the, the fuse box. So this is my back seat um, where I put this box in previously to put the air compressor in the fuse box. Um, so this is where I have some extra space. So, so here's my air compressor currently um, and the fuse box that I put in. And there's a solenoid up in the engine bay uh, so it only turns on with uh, key accessory power. And uh, so that'll be perfect for GPS, uh, any type of uh, uh, camera system, or anything else that you wanna plug into that. So we'll just have to run it back to that um which is nice because i already have the power um and shouldn't be too difficult uh so what i'm thinking is so we have our current adapter here right and you know garmin doesn't make a specific hardwire kit uh and we don't want to avoid any warranties or anything like that so um but there's nothing too you know, nothing too special about this so um you know because whenever you plug this into your cigarette lighter this is just 12 volt power so uh as long as this is going back to uh the battery then it should be fine uh, i don't want to cut this off and just hardwire it directly in so what i'm going to do is get a, a female uh cigarette lighter adapter um that i'll plug in here and that's the, what i'll hardwire directly to my fuse box um and so, I mean, I'm going to my fuse box. You know, you can go to any fuse box that has availability in your car. You can go directly to the battery as long as you add your own fuse. Um, so you got plenty of uh, plenty of options there. So yeah, let's check it out, get started, uh, see what things are looking like, uh, start taking things apart a little bit. I don't think we'll have to take too much apart, which is nice, but uh, yeah, let's check it out, see what, see what we got. Okay, so it doesn't look like I'll have to take too much apart. I'm, I don't think I'll have to remove or drop the whole headliner, which is nice because that would be a pain. Um, you see these two little L-shaped uh, covers. 
Um, I'm pretty sure there's some screws under here, so we'll remove those. There's one on each side. Take the screws out. This should drop out, give us access to that. Um, then if you look at, uh, you got the, the handle here. Um, there's two covers, one here and one here. So there's bolts behind these and that allows to remove the A-pillar um, and we can fish some wire up along this into here. Um, and that should be pretty easy. So let's check it out and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so I already took the one side off, the little L bracket here, uh, just to make sure I knew what I was doing uh, so I can show you guys. So let's see if I can get this. Um, so I have this little tool here. Um, it just helps with, uh, you know, removing body panels and whatnot, but you know, any flathead screwdriver, something small, uh, will work just fine as well. So let's check this out. So you just kind of get on the inside here and uh, just kind of pry it and pop it up a little bit. Okay, so here's the little L brackets. Uh, so you can just see these little clips there. That's what's holding them in. And uh, they just pop right out. And once you do that, um, so I just have a, a T10. Uh, there's two screws here. Okay, so that's what's holding those in. I think this top panel should kind of pop out okay so there's also two screws up in these in this front area also so i'll get those removed okay so the two bolts are out now and so now is what i gotta do is there's two clips underneath here and you just kind of gotta yank it out. Uh, I'm gonna need both hands for this, so be right back. Okay guys, finally got this out. So, kind of a pain, you gotta really yank on these things, but uh, eventually it comes out. There's just one clip right here, and the two bolts we, we removed earlier, and then it's just pull. So that's out, and now we have good access to uh, running wires. Again, up through the headliner, go across, come down. We'll come down to, uh, here's the driver's side fuse panel. Um, there's some clips here, I already pulled this panel off. Um, but we'll just run our wires down. And uh, so previously from my uh, air compressor install, I should already have um, kind of a pull wire under here. Okay, so I removed these panels, so uh, we will come just run our wires down here. Um, I have a bunch of wires around already uh, for different pieces of equipment, but I got this little pull wire here um, that I kind of left. Um, so if I ever need to run some more wire, um, I can just attach it to this, pull it through, makes it super easy. Uh, so yeah, now we have our pathway. I can run some wire. Uh, I forgot to mention too, so we gotta remove uh, this little plate right here. Um, we're going to have to remove this as well. Um, so that uh, we can run the wires from the headboard out to where the to where the mirror is. Okay guys, making some progress here. So I got a wire that I fished through um, up over the headliner and uh, coming out this side. So now I can pull uh, wire over the headliner wherever I need to and uh, I mean, I'll probably leave a piece up here maybe for just later if I need to pull anything through but uh, Yeah, this is a uh, step one And now we can actually run our actual wires Okay, so I got it pulled through got the main USB cable pulled through so I just, uh, yeah, taped it up to the other end, pulled it through, and now I got this end. 
that I can run. I'll see if I can fit it alongside down here. Um, might be just enough and then I'll have my female end that's gonna attach to this, if you guys remember. Um, I don't have it yet, but uh, I ordered one. I think it'll be here uh, in a day or two. So I'll have to get as far as I can today and finish it up when this comes in, but I can get uh, pretty much 90% of it ready and then just plug it in and be good to go. So let's keep, uh, keep running some wire. Okay guys, making progress. So I got my wire pulled through. Um, the door sill here. Got my uh, positive and negative wire that I'll be running to my uh, fuse box here. And then it goes up to the front. And I got it pulled through uh, coming up right here. So here's my two positive and negatives. Um, so I was gonna put an adapter on this uh, the female adapter and tie that back so I don't have to deal with that, but um, I kind of want to just cut this off now. Um, I verified that nothing's being changed inside here uh, power-wise, so I mean 12 volts is 12 volts. Um, so I'm just going to cut this off and wire it directly to my fuse box and uh, that'll be much cleaner instead of trying to hide this chunky thing in here somewhere and just having an extra failure point of something coming disconnected. Uh, with this guy later on. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's cut this guy off. Here we go. Okay, guys, it's all powered up and working. Got my power wire, ground wire, routes behind my uh, storage bin here. Goes through the door sill up to the other door sill. the door sill. There's my wires coming up alongside and then um, I got some spares here uh, for a dash cam I'm gonna install here in a few days. Um, got an extra pull wire here uh, if I need to pull anything through the headboard so it's all ready to go. Um, it's gonna come down here. Um, here's my mount and my wire for now. Um, once I get the dash cam I'll probably adjust that a little bit but I got plenty of a uh, Plenty of wire to uh, to move it up, down, find the best position for it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, all wired up, hardwired to the system, and uh, on accessory power. And uh, yeah, it's working great. All right, guys, got it installed. Um, everything's mounted up, wired, working, powered, uh, hardwired to the truck, back to my fuse box. So. Um, don't have to worry about any adapters or anything coming apart there, which is nice, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, it turned out, uh, uh, kind of how I expected, which is nice. Um, haven't used it yet, but it's, uh, you know, it's installed and working, so that's the next step. Yeah, overall, I like it. Uh, you know, I played around with the maps a little bit, um, went for a short drive just to make sure it's working properly. Um, but you know, I won't be able to test it with a trailer till probably next week. So that's the, that's the big test. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, it's got a lot of options that I probably don't need, but I'd rather have, you know, stuff that I don't need as opposed to, you know, things I want that it doesn't have. So, um, yeah, all in all, super excited about it. Uh, let me know, let me know what you guys think. Would you guys get one? Uh, you know, would you stick to your phone? Is it overkill? You know, probably, but nice to have, I guess. Um, I'd rather have it and uh, not need it than need it and not have it, right? So, um, yeah, what do you guys think? Um, anything you guys want to see from it? Uh, if you want me to do any specific tests, let me know. Um, happy to do that. Other than that, I'll give it a test next week and hope you guys have a good day. See ya.